This demonstration we're going to look at the MAP Toolkit. MAP stands for Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit and what we're going to have a look at here is we're just going to have a look at how we can use this to conduct network-wide deployment readiness assessments. What we're going to use it for here is we're going to use it for server virtualization. So the first thing I need to do is just launch a setup program. So I've already downloaded this so we'll just double click on the MAP setup.exe. It's going to go away now and it's going to extract the files. And then all we'll do here is we'll just select next. We'll accept the license agreement, select now next button, just go with the default installation location, select next. We don't really want to participate in the program, don't have an internet connection, so we'll select next. Just have a quick look through, happy with the summary, so now we'll select install. Right, this is going to take a few minutes to install, so we're all going to watch the green bar move across the screen. We'll just pause the video at this point and return back once the installation is complete. As we can see, installation is complete, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to finish this off. I will open the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit, and then we'll just create a little database where we can store the information from the scans. So we'll select Finish. Just close down this screen here. And what we're going to do here is we're just quickly going to create a database, so we'll just call it Demo. And then select OK. Right, so like I said, we're going to use this for server virtualization, so we'll select our server virtualization button. Now we'll select our server virtualization button. Next thing to do here is we just need to collect some data. Right, so we're going to collect inventory data. So what we're going to look at here is we're just looking for our Windows computers. And select next. We're going to use Active Directory Domain Services. So what we'll do at this point here is we'll just select next and then we just need to fill out the information for our Active Directory domain. So as we can see here, we're going for a datum domain, domain accounts administrator, and I've stuck in the administrator password. Now we'll select the next button. We'll find all computers in all domains, containers, and organizational units, and select next. Next thing we need to do here is just provide some information so we can collect information from the computers. So we'll just select create at this point here, and we'll just fill out the account entry information. So we're going to use a date and backslash administrator. Stuck in our passwords. We'll just save this off now. We'll then select next. Just have a quick look at the credentials order. Just make sure we've got everything in place. Select next. And then just on our summary page, have a quick scan through. Fairly happy with all of this. So the next thing to do at this point here is just select our finish button. Right, so now it's going to go away and it's just going to go through and collect all the data. So we'll just pause this and return back once all the data has been collected. We've now come back, it's completed, so just have a quick look at the details here. So we can have a look through here. Total discovered in Active Directory, we've got 11 computers. We haven't manually entered anything. Inventory data, fine. Newly discovered is 11. We can have a look at the object count here. We're fairly happy with all the data. So at this point here, we'll just select close. As we're going to virtualize some of our physical servers, the next thing we really need to know is we need to know how they perform. If we don't know how they perform, we can't decide what hardware to actually give the virtual machines once we convert through the physical machines to virtual machines. So what we have here is we have our collect performance data, so we'll just select this. And now what we're going to do here is we're just going to go through the configuration. We only have Windows-based machines, so we'll go with Windows-based machines and select Next. On our choose computers, what we'll do here is we'll just choose the computers from the list on the next step of the wizard. And we'll select next. And what we've now got is we've now got our computer list. We're going to select all the computers, so we'll just go with computer name. As we can see, that selects everything. And then all we do at this point here is we'll just select next. Then we'll just have a look here. So we are logging in as a date and backslash administrator. We'll select next again. Have a look at the credentials order. We're happy with that. Select next again. It's just telling us here 11 computers have been identified. The monitor's going to start, so we'll just select the finish button. And we'll leave this to go. So we'll just pause this just while it's collecting the information. Let's return back some information. So we've got 11 machines identified from Active Directory. We've got three computers currently running. I've actually got 
three machines. I've got LON CL1, which is my Windows workstation. I've got LON DC1, which is my Active Direct Domain Controller, and I also have my Hyper-V host as well. The other machines that we've got failures with here is purely because they're not powered on at this point in time. So what we're going to do at this point here, we'll just have a quick look through. We can see we've collected some performance data. This was the real world. I'd get some usable information out of this. I'd then analyze all of that and decide exactly how I'm going to configure my Hyper-V hosts in order that I can virtualize all my physical servers. So what I'm going to do at this point here is just click the close button. One of the other things we can use the map toolkit for as well is creating our hardware configuration for our Hyper-V host. So we'll just click on the little button. As you can see, it takes me into a little scenario wizard. I'm going to go with my general server consolidation desktop virtualization, select my next button. Then what we're going to do here is under the hardware configuration is we're just going to come in and create some information. So let's just create a new and all we need to do here is fill out the table. Just decide to call mine server hyphen type one, doesn't really mean anything, it's just the name I've come up with, select my next button again. This point here, as we can see here, I can set up an infrastructure model and just says I allows me to share my storage and network resources across all the hosts. If I do want to create this, click on the little tick box. I don't want to, I'm not going to bother creating an infrastructure model. I don't actually know what I'm going to buy yet, so I'll just select the next button. In the case of the CPU, I can now start filling out information relating to the CPU and the servers that I'm going to buy. So we're going to go for Intel Xeons X7560s. We're going to have two physical processors. Processor speed is going to be 2.26 gigahertz, eight cores per processor. That's going to give me 16 logical CPUs. Uh, at this point here, as we can see, hyperthreads per core, hyperthreading is disabled. I'm not going to bother changing any of the cache. I'm not going to bother changing the bus speed. We'll then select the next button. I'm just going to define my storage here. So I'll define the IOPS and total available storage. So we're going to go with uh, 20,000 IOPS and 1,800 gigabytes of storage. So select the next button again. And all we need to do is fill out our network and memory. So we're going to go here with uh, 4 gig maximum throughput on the network. And we're just going to go here as well with uh, maximum RAM 128 gig per server. So select the next button. Have a quick look through the summary, select our finish button. So now we've specified some information that we're going to use. And what we've done in that demo there is we've done our assessment, we've done our planning, we'll then provide all of this information to the hardware installation engineers, the virtualization engineers, desktop engineers, server engineers, and allow them to then use that data to give us our virtualized environment. And that's the end of this very quick demonstration looking at the map toolkit. I do encourage you to have a look at it. It's a really useful bit of kit and it will help you with the planning and the implementation of your server virtualization products. 